Have you ever gotten something gift wrapped from Amazon? You know, it's your birthday or some sort of holiday and you get this cute little bag like this. Normally I will just hold on to these and use them to wrap gifts that I'm giving in the future. But this year I received this, which is very exciting. Thank you parents. But I don't know the next time I'm gonna need to give a gift quite this large. Although, I have an idea, and I just lost power. All right, so I think that my strategy here is going to be to try and retain the drawstring of the bag as the waist, since it just, it, it feels like that's where the, the waistband of this dress should go. And then I think I am going to try and leave as much length as possible. I've really been digging the, you know, floor length dresses lately. So we'll do what we can there. And then that leaves me with a little bit of material that I can use to cover the bust. I have kind of a couple different thoughts there, but let's just start draping the skirt and see where we go. I will need to go ahead and seam rip open that bottom of the bag first, because that's going to make this whole thing one big tube that I can put on my dress form. After fiddling about with these ruffles for a bit, I did eventually decide that I wanted to take back this facing material that's inside the top of the ruffle, so I just simply seam ripped it apart, starting out on my form for some reason. Like it worked, it just wasn't necessarily the most ergonomic. So uh, I did go ahead and remove this ribbon around the drawstring waistband area and set that aside for use later and then finished up my seam ripping with it off of the form. This is way, way faster. I then went ahead and added some pins to the center front and the center back, although I didn't bother doing any on the sides since they already had seams from when it was sewn up as a bag. I then tried to connect each of these respective spots with where they belonged on the dress form. So the sides, the center back, the center front, so on. So next, what I'm gonna try and do is pleat this evenly about the waist. I think in my head, I like the idea of lots of very fine pleats. So I'm going to see what I can do. Turns out I guess it wasn't actually all that necessary to subdivide out the center front and sides and so on since I just ended up turning the whole thing inside out and then repleating it. But hopefully this at least gives you an idea of how I went about dividing up my fabric evenly so that I can then fit it onto the form. I'm not sure that I'm in love with this. I don't know if I don't like the way the pleats radiate outward and, you know, go all the way back. The final version probably wouldn't be this tall. It'd probably be like maybe about here or so with like straps. I'm not sure if I'm feeling this. I'm gonna sleep on it. See what I think in the morning. All right, so I slept on it and I think that I do like it okay. You can see that I added some straps and like a waistband to kind of imagine what it's gonna look like in the end. I, I lowered the neckline a little bit and I'm liking it more. So that's a good sign. I do still think though that I don't like the way that the pleats go outwards towards the back of the body. I think I'd rather them go in towards the middle, which is the same way that I have it on the back. See how the pleats go in towards the middle of the body? I think I like this look better, so I'm going to rearrange the front pleats so that they match the back. So I kind of hated it, so I'm completely redoing it. But you know, that's part of the creative process. It's fine. So I took it off, I took all the pins out, it's now a big rectangle again. So I'm going to go ahead and put the thing back on here and attempt to make some really big uh, box pleats that will end at the waist and so you'll get to see the, the pleat at the waist and that'll be lovely. Each of the lines here are going to be where the seams go. Let's see if that works any better. So I'm relatively happy with, 
where we're at now, I think I'm going to like this better. So each of these little flaps is going to become a box pleat, so it's going to get flattened down. But first, I'm going to stitch each of these pinned seams until I get to the waistband, and then I, I guess I'm going to see whether or not this stuff will iron safely. That'll, that'll be exciting. As it turns out, yes, it irons just fine as long as you make sure to keep the heat very low. So I did cut away any of the excess seam allowance in the bodice and then left it full in the skirt so that I could then use that, that fullness in the pleat to form a set of little box pleats like so. And now I need to figure out some sort of like top solution. I think this is a little bit higher than I would like it to be, so I'm going to kind of look at this and decide what I want it to look like. I'm going to add some shoulder straps, and I think I'm, I might add some little like waist loops to go with the waist tie. I'm not sure yet. This is what a lot of sewing is, is just like pondering it as you're making. Hmm. I procrastinated on making a decision for a bit by sewing in a zipper in red because that's what I had. And then I did eventually decide to make sort of a like a v-neck, very slight v-neck on the front and back. So I folded down the excess fabric until I kind of liked the look of it. And then I also went ahead and clipped my seam allowances on the underarm, arm side type area, and then top stitched that whole thing down. I also gave the bottom of the dress a little bit of love by folding it up, making a very deep hem, and then top stitching it in place to keep everything nice and neat. The belt also got an additional piece of trim top stitch on the underside to keep it from collapsing. So while I prepare this for its final reveal ironing, which I always recommend by the way, if you're going to put so much effort into a project, you should go ahead and iron it one last time before you try it on so that like it looks as absolutely fantastic as you can possibly have it look for that like first reveal on your bod, recommend. But while I get this ironed for you guys for that final reveal, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Acorn TV. So I've talked about them several times before and they, they have lots of really great dramas, but lately I've been kind of craving just a little bit more reality, not like news, let, let's not go overboard, but you know, some fun like documentary style realness. Things like a stitch in time, which by the way, if you haven't seen yet, you need to stop this video and go watch that now. Also things like Victorian Farm, which is just great. I think it's a really fantastic example of what reality TV should be. No ridiculous overblown drama. It's just the fun of, of a challenge of trying to live on a Victorian old farm and you know, exploring the various aspects of day-to-day -day life back then. You can get these shows and many, many more over at Acorn TV for just $5.99 a month. You can watch on your phone like I sometimes do, or like I have over there on my computer in the corner, I, I have it paused so that I can talk to you lovely folks for a moment, but however you want to watch, they probably have a way to make it work for you. Escape to Victorian British farms and beyond without ever leaving your ironing table. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code MORGAN. All right, let's give this dress a try. I am so 
very pleasantly surprised at how well this turned out. Now, I'm under no illusions. This isn't exactly going to be clothing that will stand up to the ages. It's, it's, this fabric is really not meant to be worn. Uh, so I'm sure that for long-term use, it probably wouldn't stand up well, but for a few fun parties. And honestly, if you get one of these like giant bags this year, use it to practice making mock-ups for something that has like a lot of body and structure to it because it just, it stands up so much that it, it's excellent for that. Oh, and I would also recommend that uh, maybe if you don't want to make mock-ups out of it, it would be a really nice pattern paper. So if you've ever used like the Swedish tracing paper or something, it's not white and therefore you can't trace with it, but it does have that same sort of non-woven fusible fabric, which is nice because you can really easily pin it to your stuff or stitch up your, your pattern really quick and verify that it looks kind of right. So uh, again, basically making a mock-up, but whatever, you get what I mean, right? This, this would actually make a really nice like pattern paper to use to keep your patterns on because it's, it's not stretching, it's not going anywhere, it's really stable, the edges don't fray. Like if we're gonna try and reuse and recycle, this, this has some, some potential in it. I'm really happy that I decided to use the drawstring ribbons to make the waistband belt and the little shoulder straps. I think it's so stinking cute. Ugh. I don't know if I should think my own stuff is super cute, but I don't care. I'm into this. I did reinforce the belt because, you know, it's just kind of a flimsy polyester belt. So I added some extra stitching underneath here to help give it something a little bit more uh, structure on the, the main part of the belt. And I kind of wish I'd done the same thing for the straps, at least like from here to here or so, so that the part where it's stitched to the, the bodice top would have a little bit more uh, reinforcement because this ribbon is definitely not meant to take the kind of strain that it's currently under to, to hold up. And it's not like the dress is heavy. Uh, it's actually really, really light, but that probably would have been good because the threads on the ribbon are starting to separate. I don't know why I'm like thinking about these things because I'm not gonna make another one of these, but it is good to look at your materials and see what, if you wanna use similar materials in the future, you might have to do to make them work best for you. I do kind of wish that the bottom had just a teensy bit more width, which I suppose that you could add some gores in it, but part of the fun of this was starting with a tube and <laughs> making it, you know, fit my, my bodice. Mission accomplished. Yeah, guys, I had a lot of fun. And thank you again to Acorn TV for sponsoring my continuous shenanigans and thank you guys for watching i hope you have a fantastic start to your 2021